السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ وصلاۃ وسلام علی نبی محمد علی وصحبہ وسلم اما بحبت اللہ کوشچن واز آسٹ اباؤٹ سیلف ڈسپلن And it goes, As-salamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I was wondering if you could advise me on practical steps to attain self-discipline, the benefits which come about when one has attained it, and the state of the one who chooses to persist in choosing into the same poor decisions which are clear that have a negative effect on the iman. Also some benefits and motivational points from the Quran and the Sunnah on why one should live a healthy and fit lifestyle and how it will benefit them, especially in their youth. Barakallah fikum wa fikum barakallah. First and foremost, I don't, uh, it doesn't come to mind any adilla from the Book of Allah or the Sunnah, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that I can think of, nor do I have time to really do the research, unfortunately. But just as general advice, which... The Adilla in general uh, <clears throat> leads us with regards to these issues is first, self-discipline. Islam, Aslan, from its Asl, from its origin, is uh, encourages us to be disciplined, self-discipline. For example, praying five times a day, that requires self-discipline, that requires making, taking steps to fulfill the purpose of creation, which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded you to do. I have not created mankind in jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. So by fulfilling that, uh, by fulfilling what what your ghaya, what your reason for being per, uh, created uh, is, that this requires self-discipline. Fasting the holy month of Ramadan, Ramadan requires self-discipline. Fasting Yomu Khamis or Yomu Uthnain. According to the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that this also uh, is, you know, Islam is full of those uh, actions and those acts of worship and ibadah which require self-discipline. And I think you've pretty much answered what you asked in many of the things. We know the effect that when we are weak in our ibadah, when we're weak in our self-discipline, and we're not able to fulfill the acts of worship, of course our iman decreases. Because as is known from Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah, the Qaida, is that Al Iman Yazid bi Ta'a wa Yamkus bil Masiya. That uh, Iman, faith, it increases with obedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it decreases with disobedience, disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Ta'ala. So that means the more that we sin, the weaker our iman gets. And it's an illustration of weak iman. So it can turn out to be, it can turn to a cycle if one is continually into disobedience to Allah. And the Prophet ﷺ also mentioned, لا ينبغ المؤمن في جهر, في جهر مرتين. Or كما قال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم in an authentic hadith, that the mu'min is not Uh, the believer is not stung from the same uh, in the same uh, hole twice or in the same place twice or something similar to this letting us know that this is a sign of weak iman also to keep making the same mistakes now we can definitely apply this to sin because some of us we do uh, we do sins we feel sorry we make toba and then we end up doing the same sin And some people don't even make the toba and they just continue in a cycle of sin. They're in a cycle of sin. They can't get rid of the boyfriend. They can't get rid of the girlfriend. They, you know, it's hard for them to really leave the weed. It's hard for them to, uh, you know, leave up, leave off music or whatever the case may be. And so uh, this, of course, is a sign of weak iman and it can become a cycle of weak iman. And leaving ma'asi, Leaving sinfulness is a part of self-discipline. That's also a part of that self-discipline. The discipline that you're asking about, that we all want to attain and achieve, this uh, discipline, uh, part of that discipline is the discipline of leaving off the ma'asi. As the ulama mentioned, the different types of sabr, the patience, is that sabr ala ta'atillah, that there's patience 
in worshiping Allah. That requires patience. It requires patience to get up in the morning for Fajr and pray. It requires patience when it's cold to make wudu. It requires patience to do those acts of ibadah, praying five times a day. That requires patience. Some people, they don't, obviously. And that requires patience. So patience ala ta'atillah, patience ala ma'asiyatillah. And then there's patience with regards to sins. How can there be patience with regards to sins? That is the self-restraint that you're talking about, that you're asking about, is that by being, uh, when a person restrains themselves from doing acts of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, this is acting on self, this is the discipline that we're talking about, and that's sabr. Well, asar inna l'insana lafi khusli l'alladina amanu wa amanu salihati wa tawasu bil haqqi wa tawasu bil sabr. So, the exhortion, you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala exhorts us all through the kitab, through his book, and through the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to be patient. In Allah ma sabarin, very little laws with those who are patient. So patience is actualizing that self-discipline that you're, you're, you're talking about. And we know the immense benefits. Suffices us that ayah we just mentioned, in Allah ma sabarin, very little laws with those who are patient. What do you need after that? Who, who else can assist you? Who else can support you? Who else can answer your prayers? Who else can help you in that what you need and that what you want? And who else can protect you and prevent you from harm? But Allah is a jail. So this is the benefits of patience. And there are so many books and so many treatises uh, written by the ulama that detail these uh, important uh aspects of iman and uh, aspects of deen and the importance of that self-discipline and that self-restraint and a last point as far as motivational points and why one should be healthy and fit i think that doesn't also doesn't require uh, a lot of text and a lot of uh looking at much because islam encourages us to the Prophet ﷺ encouraged racing, encouraged shooting of bow and arrows and horseback riding. Those are physical things. Those are physical ways of taking care of yourself. The Prophet ﷺ enjoyed racing with Aisha anha, his wife. And this is these are physical activities. We know that being the body is one. The Prophet ﷺ said. And this is from the point of Nasus, but we know this from science, we know this from Tatbiq, uh, Amali, we know this from uh, uh, from the experience of mankind, of humankind, that the body, the, the mind, the body, the spirit, they are one. Okay, we're, uh, you know, we're physical beings, we're spiritual beings, and physical, spiritual, and mental, if you want to divide the mental from the spiritual. So we have an intellect. And we have uh, uh, all of these things. And that when you, for example, as far as Emily, that when you eat bad food, the person who eats processed food, okay, a lot of times, if they don't suffer from obesity, they have other sicknesses, a lot of other sicknesses, or at least in the long term, we know that to be the case, that those processed foods have ill effects, okay? And we see that around the world societies are suffering when you are a person who's obese i know so many people that pray who are much younger than me and they have to sit in a chair they're sitting in chairs already because of obesity and because they don't physically exercise and they're you know they have a different lifestyle and they eat whatever they eat they can't even sit and and, and, and pray and, and make ruku on the ground or sujood they uh they have to sit in a chair and this, obviously, that affects your ibadah. It affects the, the quality of your worship. It also affects you the more an obese person doesn't jump out of bed. They have a much more difficult time getting up for fajr and praying. Okay, The person who's healthy and healthy uh, fully, physically, mentally, and spiritually, they have a much easier time to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who has nishat. And this is what the ulama, they mention this a lot about seeking knowledge and about ibadah that went, you know, and that, that's why the Prophet said that the two things that 
that the people that many of the people desire a siha wa farag is the health and time because with time you can you can seek knowledge you can do good deeds you can do righteousness and with uh, your health you can worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and do those same things but the one who's sick what can they do with that when you lose that health when you lose that then that's the time to just hope for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's mercy because you don't have the ability to do the same kind of ibadah that you do when you're younger or do the same same, same type of ibadah that you could do when you're healthy so islam and uh the common sense and the intellect and everything calls us to be healthy there's health is you know if you've ever been sick or you ever had something simple like even a serious back pain a back pain can humble the mightiest man the mightiest bodybuilder, the mightiest look at the football players and they have to take steroids in their back just to continue playing because your back is critical. Your neck is critical. If you've ever had any kind of injuries, you realize and how that affects your ibadah, especially if you had something, sometimes it might be something simple as your wrist and you can't even make sujood properly on it. Okay, and you can't even use it for sujood. And so it goes without saying that living a healthy and fit lifestyle it has nothing but khair to offer with it. Nothing but khair, especially if you are healthy for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you're healthy by eating halal and doing the, the righteous in the law tayyib, la yaqbalu illa tayyib. Verily Allah is good and he only accepts good. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam ala Muhammad.